Welcome to another episode of On Campus with JB and Skiggy. Obviously, I'm JB, Jeremiah Bogan. Uh, like we promised you guys, we got a big time guest. You know, you guys have seen the gifts on Twitter, teased you guys a little bit, told you guys you guys were not ready for what we were bringing to the table. See that we got your attention. So now we're bringing my co host, Skiggy, to in- introduce his boy and our guest, and obviously introduce himself. Here we go. What's what up? you got for us, Skiggy? What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? You know, we're doing it big this week. Uh, no script. We're just chopping it up with a very special guest this week. We got uh, former Clemson cornerback Darion DK Kendrick on with us today. And so I'm going to introduce him, let him talk about himself a little bit, and then we'll get into the show. What's going on, DK? So, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I know DK, but name Darion Kendrick. I um, come from Rock Hill, South Carolina. Uh, yeah. You know, small city or whatever. Uh, went to South Point High School. Um, you know, Skid, we did some great things there. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, trying to keep that going, you know. But former Clemson quarterback. Um, and I, right now I'm in decision where, where I want to go, uh, where I want to land, what's good for me, and what's going to be better for my future. Uh, I'm a father, too. Um, got a three-year-old and a one-year-old, so that's why I'm really doing this for. And then I got a family that's behind me 100%. So. For sure. All right. That's uh, a little bit by me. Obviously, one of the big things that uh, DK just mentioned here is he's from Rock Hill, South Carolina. If you guys have no idea what that place is, Rock Hill, South Carolina, a.k.a. Football City USA, produces straight-up ballers out of the area. We're talking Gilmore, Clowney. Chris Hope, Jonathan Joseph, all kinds of guys from that area. And we're going to start you. I'm going to start you off hot, DK. I'm going to ask you a big question from the get-go. Um, you're in a, a city like that that kind of is known for producing guys. You guys have a crazy little league system that pretty much dubs guys as the chosen ones by the time they're eight or nine years old. And you were a guy who pretty much got that attention from the time you're eight or nine years old. You're pretty much what people call – a hood neighborhood hero, hood legend, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. What What is it like having to live and be completely honest with us about this? Like, if you struggle with this, some what is it like having that pressure on you, even from just being a young kid? And then what's it like when as that pressure mounts as you get older in your career? Um, I say I I did a good job like with handling it. Like I wasn't really into like like what what the name was like five star, four star really. I was just trying to be the best I can be. But I know I know like what I can do. So I'm gonna you feel me, I'm I'm gonna show what I can do. I'm gonna talk what I can do. It's not really like, nah, I can do this, but nah, let me back down just cause I'm playing such and such or you feel me like, no, it's not that. I'm gonna bring out the best every time I step out in front of somebody because that's the type of person I am. I'm a competitive guy. So every time I get at you, we gonna go ahead. Is you gonna win or not? That, that's that's very true about him. I mean, DK, he's just a natural born leader. Um, he's not a guy that really has to say much, but when when he he has that look in his eyes, you know it's go time. Game day, it's up. Anytime we step on the field, he's giving it a hundred percent. So uh, that's what I really really always admired about him. Uh, he was always game ready, whether it be practice, we going over reps for seven on seven season, whether we're we're just practicing in the summer. He was always, you know, game ready type of guy. Not even that, like, yeah, it's, it's that, but I also want people around me, you feel me, doing better. I want to see them doing good, you feel me. So like, when they doing stuff, I'm really, I'm more hyped for them than I am when I when I do something. Oh yeah, you feel me, like. If your boy's eating while you eating, come on now. It's going to look better. It's going to look yeah, better yeah. now. Like, be honest. I'm like, doing something. So, yeah, like, it, it wasn't just for me. It was like, oh, I want everybody. I see what I'm doing. See what see what I'm getting. Like, I'm getting all these offers. So, why don't, like, I spread, like, try to get them boys some, some looks, too. Even if they getting looks, it can go bigger. You feel me? Go bigger than what they get. So, that's how I, how I always start. Skiggy talked about you being just a natural born leader. I think obviously with some of the things that have happened outside off the field, people have a misconception of who you are as a person, uh, talking about maturity concerns, everything. Like what 
do you tell those people who are creating these narratives about you that have no idea who you are? You know how the media is. You're a guy who's kind of been off the grid since your exit at Clemson and no one's really heard from you. So this is just what do you have to say about people who question your character and the kind of person you are off the field? I mean, you got you to gotta know me for real. I mean, I don't really talk to many people like that. Um, hey, everybody got different lives. Everybody, life go different. Everything happens, you feel me, in, in mysterious ways. Um, I had I had a lot going on, like not even at school, like just in, in my life, like just going on. So I wasn't really able to do the stuff that they wanted me to do. Mm. Like, so, so what do you like? Yeah. What, obviously, don't want to get too much of your personal life if you're not willing to share that. Yeah. If you will, if you're willing to share who you are as a person, like just talk about what. Like, what did you mean by that as far as I didn't, you weren't able to do the things like, I need you to do? Family, like, what's going like, on at home? Family, like, family gonna come before, like, anything for real, like. Absolutely. All right, so, yeah, I had some problems, like, my son had some problems going on, so I was with him. I went really at school. I, it was, like, during springtime, so I had a lot going on then. So, I was with him. Then, wasn't really doing work, couldn't really do work, because I was always in the hospital. At going to the hospital back and forth, so that's one thing. And then having having them, and then having you feel me, all this extra going around in my city where I have to come back to to see them. You feel me? Mm-hmm. Like everybody got to protect themselves. Like it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing against nobody. Like everybody got to protect themselves. You don't know what's gonna happen at what time. I don't care who you is, what your name is. None of that. Like, you can be the smallest person in the city. Nobody knows you. Something can still happen to you. So it's always, you got to be aware of your surroundings and what's going on around you. It's not really trying to, I don't know, trying to act. You feel me? Like trying to act somebody you not. It's just, you got something to live for. And people don't really understand that as an athlete. Like, they'd see you on TV and like, man, why don't, this kid messing up his shot. Uh, he's a knucklehead, blah, blah, blah. But they had no idea. What you're doing, like, for example, people have no idea that you're making a drive from Clemson to back to Rock Hill, maybe on like a random Tuesday night. You probably got to get to workouts the next morning and you got to get back up and drive back the next day all because of you have stuff going on at home. And nobody else in the world knows about that. They're just making up this assumption of you. Like, what is it like to have that pressure on you every single day just to because obviously like you want to be a family first guy, but you do have obligations to your football team and you want to feed your family because that's that's how you that's what you want to do right. you want to go to the next level so how hard is it to balance that certain people certain people understand that certain people don't it's just a hey, you got to have some communication about that you know uh, which on my part I, I didn't have too much communication I was just like I got to be there so that's where a little misunderstanding went but it's always it's got to be some understanding somewhere Okay, so so you would say your biggest weakness throughout the whole situation wasn't so much the maturity concerns that people are making up about you. It's just the fact of not being able to be on the same level of communication-wise yeah. with your coaching staff and everything like that, which is a big thing because a lot of things can get misconstrued in right. translation. Because like next thing you know, you don't you're not at workouts one day and your teammates are trying to tell the story about where's what's, where's DK at? What's he up to? And nobody can really tell it because. You not you didn't say it from it didn't come from the source itself, so that's another right. big thing. Uh, just being able to communicate, I think that's a problem that we do have as black men sometimes. Like we don't want to tell people what our problems are. We just like I'm gonna just go handle it and just know I'm gonna be back. That's all. That's right. all you need to know. And that sometimes can get us in trouble. And it's like in your situation, obviously now now people are saying you're this, you're that, but really your maturity issue is communication. How many how many of us all are bad at communication? Plenty of us are. 90% of us are at this age. Like, just being able to give a, a back and forth communication, let people know what's but going it's on. But it's going to be, you feel me? It's going to be presented in different ways. Exactly. You know, yours, yep. yours can be smaller. Mine, you feel me? It's out there. Feel mm-hmm. me? It, it's just, everybody, it, it ain't nothing to speak on. You feel me? Yeah. <laughs> everybody got their problem. Um, mm-hmm. you, you, you talk about uh, your two kids being an inspiration. Um, a lot of people see the writing you have on your tape, um, and it talks about two friends that we lost, one in high school, one uh, our freshman year of school. 
talk a little bit about who those people were to you and what what they do to inspire you on the field. Um, first, uh, my boy back, which he was, we've been around each other since we was like fifth, sixth grade, so we known each other for a little minute. Uh, he always kept like. He always kept a smile on his face, like no matter what. So I was like, like damn, like that's something I need to do. Like you feel me? Like when he when he passed like that, I was like, damn, that's something I need to do. Not be down. Like keep a smile on your face, no matter what. Don't let no let nobody see you down, no matter what's going on. Cause they can they can see they can see you down. They come to beat you up. You don't want, you don't want nobody to you feel me? See you like that. And and then my boy Demond, he was always there. Like always there for anybody. Like, <laughs> anytime you call him. Like that's how he was. And that's like that's in me. Like I always knew him like since I was in like kindergarten. We went to the same school. So that was always in him. So that's that's part of me too. And then I got a we got a little, little homeboy Savion. We played we played little league with most quietest dude, coolest dude, don't bother nobody. But he worked hard. He do what he's supposed to do. So, you know, people like that, like, you got pe- people like that, you got to keep them around you because they, they're good for you. They always teach you something. And that's that's a big thing, obviously, talking about keeping certain people around you, certain people in your corner. You're a guy who, it's funny, people can make up stories and stuff about you when you're probably one of the most private people of your of your of your stature, like you know, a lot of people of your stature they're out there flaunting, just talking about this and that. Everyone knows about their life and all this, but you're one of the most private people, and people are able to make up stories about you. And sometimes even the people around you, like Skinny, for example, I asked him about if you posted a decision. He said, "I had no idea." Like <laughs> this is where your closest friends. It's like yeah. so. Just I really like what you said about keeping certain people around you because that's what's important. And for us as young black men. Obviously, now that we've had this, I've never met you in my life, never spoken to you in my life. But now that we're in this circle having this conversation, I'm now responsible. I'm now going to hold you accountable for everything you're doing off the field as well. It's like, that's what we got to do. We got to hold you up to that standard. You want people around you that's going to be like, nah, man, you out there BSing. You about to throw your shot away. I'm not, right. instead of the people that's in the media talking about, oh, he's just another one of those guys, blah, blah. Because we've all grown up and seen dudes with all kinds of talent throw it away. We've yep. seen it before. But that's that's not right. what you that's not what you're doing here. You're you were out being a father first because that's what it's gonna take. It don't matter what you do, whether you give a deep ball up on national TV, that should never stop you from being a good father, a good husband, a good friend, or a good son. Like it don't matter what that deep ball what happens on the field, and people don't understand that. They're like, this dude should just be happy because he's playing on the grand stage at Clemson. He's doing this. He's doing that. And speaking of playing on the grand stage, your guy. You experience so much success. A lot of people don't watch Clemson during the season. You guys play ACC in the ACC, so people aren't really looking at you guys all the all year because you don't play big time games. That's a whole other story for another day. But <laughs> when you get to the national championship game, now everyone's watching. You get to this playoff game, everyone is, in the world is watching. What was it like for you to only have your have your one bad game be on national television? How did that affect you mentally? And just to like have it happen on that stage after you've had such a great season, like whether it be uh, LSU or Ohio State, like just talk about that. You know, everybody. I think everybody have a bad game. It's it's just like that. Everybody, whether it's basketball, you go over for thirty. Whether it's football, you give up three touchdowns. You throw three picks. Whatever you drop three balls. Everybody do it. I don't care. I don't care what they tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Dion, what? He didn't got he didn't got bombed on before. <laughs> so like, bro, it's, it's a part of the game, bro. Like stuff happened, bro. Like, the only thing you can do is go clean it up. You know, see what you work on, work on what what you messed up on, what on that exact play, or go watch go watch them plays over and over. See see what uh-huh. you got to do better. See what he did. See what the quarterback did. See, you feel me? See what you was reading on that play, stuff like that. And you're you, can't really, you can't really dwell on the past. It ain't, it ain't on. It. You can't do that. That's what, that's what make your game go down. 
And you're a guy who played corner. You didn't start playing corner until your sophomore season, which your very first year. And that's all it took for people to talk about you as a draft prospect. But like for me, I know you as DK. You're the best high school player I've ever seen in person. Without period. a doubt. Without a doubt. Without, without a doubt. Not even close. And I just want to want you to explain to people like how much, how explain to people how important your little league career was and everything into becoming the player that you have become today, like playing all the different positions and being, like, what, is, what, is, what has that been like for you? Um, I had, first, I had amazing coaches. Like, like they they believed in us, like, more than we did. Like, they wanted like they wanted it for us, and we just, we just tried to take it to another level. We just had that conversation, like, in middle school. Skig, you no, know, like, before we left middle school, we told we we said we were gonna win four straight championships in high school. Yeah, yep. Like stuff like that. <laughs> like ever since we've been little, like we get scored on. We we get scored on in the game. Skid know we gotta come back to practice. We sitting on the on the fence. On the baseball fence. Mm-hmm. Quiet. Like we on the toilet. Like stuff like that just made us better because like we didn't want nobody to score. If somebody even got close to scoring, we mad, we crying, all right? Yep. Stuff, stuff like that. So they always wanted us on the next level. And uh, that's that's something I was telling Jeremiah a little bit earlier when we were talking. Um, that that first ever Cowboys team. I don't know if you remember, but they entered us in that 13U tournament, and we weren't nothing but 19 years old. We ended up winning the tournament anyway. And I think it was like. Easily, it might have. Yeah, it was. Yep, it wasn't easily. <laughs> yeah, like, and like, how did y'all, how did, how did y'all carry that momentum? Like, obviously, at eight or nine years old, you're like, man, we fine, we we like that, we know. Oh yeah. Like, we know we're gonna be this, we're gonna be that. But as kids, did you? How much did you dream about? Even just before, like NFL dreams, just dreaming about, man, I just can't wait to put the South Point jersey on because you've seen the Gilmores, you've seen the Clownies come through there. What did it mean to you guys to just – obviously, both of you guys can answer this. What did it mean for you guys to just dream to be at just the high school level and now your careers have advanced so much further than that? Just, uh, like, being on a – coming coming from whatever, middle school or elementary, going to play on the hill while Northwestern and South Point playing at each other or playing on the back side or, like, just playing on the hill or whatever, playing football, and then having to watch them boys, like, ESPN there. Like, come on now. We in, we in ESPN in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Yep. <laughs> so we like, bro, we trying, like, these boys having ESPN, all these boys, they got magazines. Them boys got, them boys on magazines, all type of stuff. So that's what we trying to do. We trying to do the same thing. We trying to do it even better. We trying to do, like, a whole, like, a whole team, like, a whole class, like, Go crazy. Skip? Man, it, it's it's wild to think about now just how far we've come. Um, I still get a little emotional because, like, we played together our whole lives, and then all of a sudden it was our last game, and it was the state championship to complete an undefeated season. So it, it's kind of like, like a, a movie, you know? Uh, it just doesn't seem real how, like – our chemistry was unmatched. There was times uh, we'd be on the field, coach called play, DK look at me and change the route, you know, just just stuff like that. But it, our chemistry was unmatched, and it yeah, was, that, out, that's it probably was outside what, of football. Yeah, that's probably what set us apart outside of football. That's what I was going to say. Like, even though we played football together, we played since we were little and we were together outside of football like yep. every day. So I think that's what, I don't know, that like motivated us more like playing for each other because we know like, oh, we out there. Like we don't care what nobody else do. We going to do us. And if they ain't doing that, you already know we turning up on yep. them. So <laughs> that's how we feel. We doing this for y'all. <laughs> We doing this for y'all, baby, and y'all and y'all ain't trying to do it for us. That's how we feel. But everybody had that agreement, like we gonna do, like we gonna do what we got to do. So having a, we talk about having certain people around you. What is the biggest 
thing or character trait that you've gotten from having someone like Skig around your whole life? Skig. Skig. <laughs> Come on. I don't know. Skig, he, like, he's always up. He's always up. Got, he gonna put a smile on your face and everybody else's face around him. You feel me? Like, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna do that. He gonna brighten up your day. There's, there's really, like, people around me anyways, like, that's all we do, laugh. From the time, from, from time you brush your teeth in the morning, from the time you trying to go to sleep, that's all we do. So you got to you gotta keep somebody around you that's going to motivate you, be there behind you, and also be there, like, be there for you, like, at any time. So. I, I feel that. So for you, when you think about all the people around you and just – their best traits. What's the biggest thing that you want to work on yourself, just as a person in general, that you feel like can help you mature to another level? I'll probably say communication for real. Like, like, that's something I gotta work on, like communicating with people, telling okay. what's going on and stuff like that. I feel that because like me and Skig have talked about this, and obviously we've seen other part. Me and Skig talk about the I Am Athlete podcast just. Why don't we as young black men have more conversations when we are vulnerable with one another, when we are having conversations where it's like, I have this going on in my life. Uh, I need to be, I, we need to be built up a little bit by the people that are around us. Even if like we get mad at our homeboys because they don't understand what we're going through. Cause like they might say something like, man, you don't know what I'm going through. Like, well, is that their fault or our fault at the end of the right. day? So it's like part of you, you're like, man, I messed up a little bit at Clemson. Cause I didn't let them know that this is my, this is like what was going on. So it's like, dang, it's my fault that they fought. But obviously just talk about how much being at Clemson did mean to you and how thankful you were that you got to be there, be playing those stages, experiences, the things that you did at Clemson, despite you guys, you not being there anymore. Um, I give a highly, highly thanks to uh, Davo, uh, just like believing me and believing in me. Like while I was there, uh, always been on me, uh, trying to get be- trying to get me better, do better in everything, even if it was off the field, on the field, um, and just like everybody around me, like just pulling for me, even if I was down, uh, just pulling for me. So that's like I played like, come on now, you gotta play with people like that. You gotta play for people like that. That's why I, like I play with so much passion. Like people around me, like. I play with so much passion in the game because I want to play for them. If they there for me, I play for them. Mm. Also, like, just like the family atmosphere, I say that. Just, I don't, I don't think it's like somebody trying to get something for you or, like, I don't know, get something for themselves. You feel me? Mm. So that's, that's what I say. So you feel like that coaching staff prepared you you know, to be a better man in life. Maybe it was just your DB coach or just talking to a specific coach that kind of helped you in your growth as a person off the field through your right. time. All right. Uh, I say Coach Reed, um, keeping me in the, like, keeping us in the word. He kept mm-hmm. us in the word every day as a practice. We, we get a little something in, uh, trying to keep us, like motivated on our goals, right? Writing our goals out before the season, uh, making sure we, you feel me, stay, stay to that. Working us out the practice, uh, staying, making sure we stay out there, watch extra film and stuff like that. Like just being honest, that's what I, that's what I like from people. Make sure that like they want it more mm. than you do. Yeah. And that's a big. That's a big thing. Like we're talking about a person like you who's a super competitor. You want people around you to you want to be coached hard. You don't want people taking it easy on you. And that's a big thing. Yeah, people like, don't understand. When when people coach me hard, it's not like I kinda laugh, because like, 'cause I'm used I'm I'm used to it. Like I'm used to it. So it's not like it hurt me. Like I'm like, Yes sir, like yes sir, I got you. Like that type of thing. I am like it's not like a nonchalant thing, but that's what I'm used to. Like, all my coaches have been like that when I've been growing up. Like, they always been on you, no matter how good you are. Skig? Man, I mean, he's right. Uh, we've had the same staff, but except for in college. And, um, like, all our coaches, they, they don't care whether you, you're 
Jesus himself. If you're on the field, you're gonna get coached hard. <laughs> so, so I mean, I, I, people don't realize that we we kind of grew up a lot quicker than we should have, because mm. um, people don't realize that DK he just turned twenty a couple months ago. You know, so so that that's a big thing that um the outside world hasn't realized that we've matured really quick for our age group and we excel really well for our age group. So, so DK is the baby of the group. Oh yeah, he's the baby, man. <laughs> which is crazy because, which is crazy because as the baby of the group, it sounds like everybody was still looking towards you oh, yeah. on Friday nights when those lights came on. It's like, all right. We know DK gonna come with it, so we gotta come with it. Like getting your teammates to match that intensity, match that level of fire that you play with, and that shows up in the way that you play on Saturdays. Uh, another thing that we, we I want to touch on too, when you had spoken about your family, uh, this is one thing that I do feel has been as hard for us as young black men. As soon as so like you start playing football, five or six years old or whatever. Uh, you see your mom, your family around you, and all of a sudden you see these guys on TV and the NFL, you see what they're doing, you see the money they're making. I feel like as young black men, we kind of, we do it, we do it out, of, out of a good place in our hearts when we're young, but it's, a un, it's an unfair burden for us to carry because at five or six years old, we're already saying, I'm going to take care of my family with this football. Yeah. Like that's, that's an unfair burden for a five or six year old to carry. And now you're carrying that your whole life and that kind of, and, you know, you do have to admit, like, admit your struggles. Like, I want you to touch on, like, admit your struggles with that kind of mindset that you've had to have growing up. I'm sure, like, you decided that probably a long yeah. time ago. And now that you have kids, too, that's a, that's another big thing. Like, how yeah. do you feel as we as young black men? Why does it always have to be, I'm going to just go take care of my family? Like, we don't have – there's nothing about us that we have to do that. Like, that's just an unfair burden for us to – Take to think of at five or six years old. I understand it later, but like, how is it to just think of that from a young age? Like, describe to people what that's like. Um, probably like, I would say probably saying like they mama do like do a lot like for, like for me like that's that's my like my situation. Like my mama did like went over the extreme. Like she did everything she could like forever. So I I noticed that quick like she used to be gone like all the time, and my my granddaddy used to stay with us so he used to take care of me. So I noticed like oh mama gone she got to do this she got to you feel me do this and that do this and that. So I wasn't really never tripping like mama being home because I know she what she doing I know what she got to do. So that's why I always kept that mindset like one day she got to retire like early like she can't be like no old woman still working. That's my mindset. Like, mama got to sit down. Like, before she fifty, mama got to sit down. <laughs> Cause she been she been ripping and running. She been taking me here, taking me there, making sure I get this, making sure I get that. You feel me? Like, that's what that's what that's the mindset that we have. Like, somebody going over extreme for us to do this, and you see other people like, yeah, they had, they, had, they had the crib making making the money. <laughs> They had the crib making more money than your mama making. You feel me? Like, like, like stuff like that. Like, it's people out here making one check and they and they out. They they on vacay. They on vacay. Like, come on now. That's how we should be. That's how I want her to be. And when you say we, you're trying. You're talking about you're trying to build some level of generational wealth for your family as well, aren't you? Right. Got you. Skig, I know we've talked about this off air before. Like, what's just your opinion on, like, you know, taking that burden from such a young age? Uh, it's, it's tough on a lot of kids because, you know, the NFL is one of those 1% kind of things. And um, it, it, it can be a motivator, but it also can be a ridiculous stressor. But uh, it's, it's all about how you handle it. Um, you know, Thankfully, uh, guys like myself and guys like DK have been able to handle that calling. And uh, for a guy like me that may either go undrafted or might not make the league or get drafted late, depending on my play, it's, it's been something that has constantly been on my mind. So um, it, it's just one of those things that I'm, 
I'd rather have that type of burden than to have a burden where like like I don't have any money at all or something like that. I think it's one of those those things that have been able to move me forward in my life. I think that also goes back to what you said earlier too about you just have to grow up faster than a lot than most kids. Like BK, yep. BK's example, he talked about his mom not being there. His grand, his mom's always working. His granddad's the one that's there. But I mean, DK, that still at some point exhausts you as the man of the house in some in some sort of capacity from a young yep. age. It's like people don't understand. DK might be twenty years freshly twenty years old, and people are out there talking about your maturity, but they're not talking. They're not talking about what you're doing as a father because you had to grow up a little faster than others. So you were prepared to take on these challenges at this age. But it's like at the same time, you're out there being a college athlete and trying to be a father at the same time. But no one out there, no one on that campus is over there teaching you how to be a father or anything. You start, you had to learn those things on your own. Right. And you out there, you out there doing those things on your own. And obviously like just tell us how much having those kids has meant to you and what kind of joy they bring into your life. And even if you got to touch on each kid a little bit about like what makes them, what makes them them? Like what bring what do they bring you? Uh, I'd say my first one, he, he going to be smart. Like he too smart for himself. <laughs> he pick up on, he pick up on everything. That he uh, does. He, he keep, he keep me laughing. And, that's 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 my twin right there. Like, got my skin tone and all. Like, so, <laughs> uh, that like he he know like I'm number one for Clemson. Like he already know that, and he's three years old. Like, so like that, like keeping that, like you hearing that and seeing that, like he putting shoulder shoulder pads and helmets on. Like, and he coming in the locker room when he can. Like when he come up to the games. Like, what? Why can't you? Why can't you do what you do to? Do do for him, like come on now. So as Man. a father, has, has before you get to the next kid, have you ever thought about is football a sport that you want him to get into? Do you want him to do be other things, be something besides that? Like just talk about like, but what? How are you gonna push him away from the sports a little bit, just to yeah. kind of make sure he's a well-rounded person? See, I don't. I'm not gonna like force nothing on him, but he mm-hmm. want he want to play. Like, already, he want to play already. Like he's like he ready, but he's getting into, he getting into baseball, and t-ball and stuff. So that's that's also something he want to do. So whatever whatever he want to do, he can do. Like it it doesn't really matter. It, it ain't gonna disappoint me. It ain't it ain't really nothing like that. I don't really know why parents really get into that. Like my child gonna do this, my child gonna do that, but your child not ready for this. <laughs> That's what I like. Your child not ready. Like it be like that sometimes. Like I'm sorry to say it, but your child not ready. Like everybody not. Feel me. Everybody not. Pat Mahomes. Everybody not Deion Sanders. Like feel me. Everybody got their different path. Yeah, he can be the best. He can be the next Bill Gates if he want to. Like you never know. You keep trying to force one thing on him. So I, it's, I'm gonna let him explore what he wants to do. Gotcha. And then you're one year you're one year old. Go ahead. Um, I say he act he act, he act like me, his his attitude. Um he if he don't know you, he's not gonna talk to you. Um <laughs> and he he follows me everywhere, so he he attached to me. Um that's my little man right there. Um just wait till he get a little older. He everywhere. He running, <laughs> running, picking stuff up. So I, don't, I can't wait till he start talking. That's, but yeah, when you have when you have somebody that like that's looking up to you, uh, you got to do whatever you can. I don't care like what it is. Even if you don't get to make your first goal or whatever, it, you still got to do it for him no matter what it is. Mm, that's. That's big. That's big right there. Obviously, like you've got, you got kids looking up to you. You're, you're obviously come across as a more mature person. These people are trying to paint a picture of. of I didn't and think that, you. Were, you I think you anything less? Than, but no, right, but you good. Even you're good. Be, even before them, like even before my my kids, like it's kids like around the city, like yep. Like people come tell me like, oh, I, 
Like he wanna be like you feel me? He wanna be you. He wanna be you. Like I always had to carry myself a certain way, like all the time. And I always been told that. Like I'm always being looked at everywhere I go. Like that's that's why I always, I always been told. Like somebody watching, like somebody feel me? Somebody always looking up at you. And what I wanna do, like. When I get older, not like not even my son, I want to go help somebody else out, like somebody did for me, like one of my coaches did for me. Like he wanna he helped me like through high school, like nobody know, like nobody know, like I had to go stay with him, like don't nobody know that. Mm. But you feel me, he helped me out a lot, so that's what I want to do, help somebody out that they need it, like not even my kid, like some some random kid out here. And that's what I want, you feel me, somebody else to do. Like, somebody got to take them, somebody under their wing to make them better. And that's the big thing, because, I mean, you're pretty much the man in your city. Like, you you understand this, and you've known that for years. So just being able to take that pressure and have people understand that the pressure that you've had since you were 8, 9, 10 years old, that there are kids. Like, once you got under those lights on Friday nights, you knew there was a kid out there in the stand somewhere saying, man, I would be like number one, who was back there playing quarterback. They don't follow you to clip, followed you to Clemson. Follow like, oh, he don't play. He playing corner now. Okay, I'm gonna try to take that same exact path that he did. I'm gonna be the star of the high school team. Everything. So, yeah, I commend you for being able to handle that pressure. And to be honest, it's amazing that people can talk about you having maturity concerns when we don't ever hear anything about you or from you until just recently. So now all of a sudden people are deciding that's your character. Well, really, this is the first time we've ever heard you having real problems outside of football. So I find that very interesting. Skiggy, anything you want to add? Oh, just excluding yourself real quick, DK. We talk about um, the Rock Hill pipeline. I'm curious to hear your top five, top five football players out of Rock Hill, excluding you. He gotta be in it. He gotta be in it though. I mean, I mean, we we know we know he's in there. He's he's top two for sure, easily. Excluding me. Excluding you, yeah. You say the best. Yep, top five. <laughs> uh, I gotta put Dan Ross in there. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I got to. Um, we saying like. Offensive players or overall? Top five, top five top overall. Five. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Derrick Ross. Got to put Coach Burris. Mm-hmm. Just off of what I've seen. Uh, Step in there. Yep, Stefan. Yep. Yep, definitely. Yeah, it's more. It's hard. It's hard. Yeah, it's hard. Shit. I got to put Clowney in there because he did everything. He played running back and the end. Yep. He went All crazy. Right. All right, Skig. Let's, see, Skig. let's see if he say the person that you said earlier. Yeah, I got right, one you more. Got, you got to put, yeah, you got to put him in there. I'm waiting on you to say him. I got one more. Yep. Cause this is the this guy is who Skiggy says is the best to come out best athlete to come out of Rock Hill. That's not oh, you. Yeah. He said you too. He said you too. Behind this guy, so <laughs> who you think that would be? Uh, I probably gotta say that little guy. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. The only person I, I I would I would give a case for that Free little guy. That little guy from across town. Yep. You know no cap. The pre heart is a yeah. bad dude. Was about five five maybe. Five five. That's a bad dude right there, yeah. man. And here okay. he'll take your team top off. Yep. <laughs> In a heartbeat. That's crazy. So speaking of the pre heart, uh, when we talk about like just five football players, for you, what was your welcome to college moment where like? The first time you got mixed, you got straight routed up, and you're like, oh, all right. So these, this is this college football, huh? My first. Nah, I wouldn't even say that. <laughs> I wouldn't even say that. I wouldn't even. Uh, 
It could be. It could be the playoff game. I mean, he dominated the ACC. That was nothing. Y'all don't play nobody, so. I'll probably say LSU. Oof. Yeah. Talk about talk about that Batman that won number one, man. And and Ohio State the the year before well, that that same year, I say both of them guys. Really? Yeah, I say Ohio State because the more going a little fast pace for the boys. <laughs> at first, the boys going fast pace, so I so everybody's a little tired, and then I say LSU. I say LSU because, like, bro, everything was, everything was going right. Yeah, I, I was in, y'all was in perfect position on some of those plays. And yeah, man, everything was going yeah. right. So you feel me? I can't. I was like, damn, this it here. <laughs> I was like, this it here. <laughs> yeah, they man. start when they start playing that playing that anthem. Oh yeah, that anthem in, in, that, in, that, in that stadium and them. What was it like preparing? What's it like preparing for a game of that magnitude? Obviously, you're a guy who played in four straight title game, state title games in high school, won four rings. But what's that level of prime time? Like, like the adrenaline rush? Like, how does it feel? Uh, it's the same. It's the same as far as like the feeling, like the feeling in your body, but. It's just like it's, I just say it's bigger. Like it's more people. You know I mean? It was more. It was definitely more people that I that I didn't play in front of. Us. Yep. Cause only only thing we get is William. We get Williams Bryce on one Saturday, and it'd be like you know I me mean? the whole city, which is it. It ain't gonna be. It ain't gonna be filling up the stands. So. Yeah. I was I was really used to the fans. That's that's probably it. It was more way more fans. It was too way louder. And that's is that I, I probably say that's the difference. Is your is the game against South Carolina mm-hmm. South Carolina game time? Is that really a rivalry? Like let's be let's be honest. Really <laughs> it's hot for it. Uh, it is. Oh. I I say, I say. Of course, uh, y'all would say it. Y'all play on the team. Like, Y'all are in the game. Man, that ain't no robbery. It, it's yeah, beef, but it ain't no robbery. These past couple years. Why y'all boys say that, man? man okay, the way one, y'all be doing them boys, it, it don't make no sense. Okay, so yeah, one, y'all be doing them dirty. Two, I don't think anybody outside but of the boy, them boys cares about the road. Them boys beat up like five times in a row, though. Yeah, but like outside yeah, one, of this state, nobody cares about that game. Yeah. I mean, hey. You know what's going on now. <laughs> <laughs> but we know that because y'all, the Clemson has become a national powerhouse. Yeah. But every year, people rivalry. But when, when like Clemson, Clemson weren't hit, when they weren't hitting on nothing, you feel me? And they were getting, <laughs> they were getting their head beat into the dirt. <laughs> it wasn't no, it wasn't no excuses. There wasn't no excuses then. We st- no one was still watching those games, regardless. Cause there's never anything on the line, besides a little pride. Yes, it's definitely yeah, the pride yeah. in it. Your homeboy play on the other team or something who, like that. Who, who basically run South Carolina for real? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I might need to put uh, or Clemson July, might need July, to start Auburn and Bama. Yeah, but they play. They play for stuff. They play for burst to SEC title games. Everything. Yep. I mean, we can't do that though. It just you feel me? It's just our schedule robbery game every year at the end, end of the season. See who see who get who. So at Clemson, could y'all have scheduled some better opponents? I don't know. I can't I can't say that for myself. Would, would it been would it been nice to play a little better out of conference games? You know, the ACC was a little was, uh, Hey. <laughs> we, can, we control what we control. We don't, we don't control how the teams got set up back in the day. <laughs> Or how the conferences got set up. We ain't, we ain't put we ain't put Duke and all them in, in the ACC. <laughs> <laughs> so so when, it, in when it comes down comes down to it, do y'all go into the season pretty much knowing? All right, we just gotta we just gotta make it to. Like y'all gonna do what y'all do, but it's like nah. Okay. 
Because now at one point, it was like Clemson was going into the season like, bro, we got to we gotta make it to the ACC championship like, mm-hmm. at one point. That's how it was. Like, and everybody, everybody forgetting that, though. Yeah. Everybody forgetting that. Everybody forgetting when Clemson was trying to make it to the ACC championship. Now it's, oh, Clemson just going to go. They going to win the ACC championship. They going to be in, of course. It's going to be like that. Tables turn, you feel me? Yeah. So, to, me and Skig talked about this in the last episode a little bit. Uh, the Justin Fields, Trevor Lawrence, or deal. Obviously, you play with Trevor, so I just want to hear your thoughts on Trevor. Then talk about Justin Fields because you're a guy who played against him on a big stage, and he always shows up on those stages. So just talk about each guy. I'm going to talk about Justin Fields first. Uh, right. here, here, remind me of... Uh, Don't say you're from high school, bro. Okay, nah. I about to say it. Oh, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> He remind me of Cam a little bit, you know, big body. He can move. He can he can throw it. He can throw it. He's smart too. Uh I'll probably say the biggest thing about him is probably like being being tough. I'd say he didn't play through some injuries and stuff when when we didn't play against him. So I say just being tough and just having that dog mindset of going out here and playing. Wait, how did it? How did I'm just I'm keep it hot with you? Got to keep it a stack on here on campus. How did it feel when his ribs got knocked out? He came came back and smoked y'all for six touchdowns. Did you expect uh, him to come out blazing like that? Because you thought he was hurt. He was like, oh, he he, he I really hurt. I really didn't expect him to do that. <laughs> but you know, stuff happens. Uh, Cause that was I different. Can't, I can't that talk how I want to, but you know. <laughs> uh, stuff happened, you know. <laughs> hey, right. hey, when you when you when you got when you had a dog mentality, anything can happen. Skid, you know, I'd have been hurt plenty of games. Man, yeah. I, I'm glad you said that because Northwestern, I want was it our junior year? Yeah, you had the ankle injury. Man, cause when I tell you he took over while hurt. I ain't never seen – I think the only better game I've seen DK play was Greer, our senior year. Yeah, I mean, oh, that, I was at that one. Oh, my Yeah, that God. game was just OD. He had, like, seven by himself. <laughs> they, was making, they was making a little close game again. He, he just up. took off by they, himself. They, right? made, they made me mad at that game. Well, they not them. Do? Not them, but the refs. The ref, uh, he, snapped, he snapped my towel from me and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they sent you, bro? Huh? That sent you, man. Cause what got you? Yeah, cause I had I had my, I had my folks on there. I had I had real, real stuff on there. Yeah. He told he told me to take it off, but I flipped it. You feel me? I flipped it to the white side so he can't see nothing. Yeah. Flipped it to the white side. You feel me? So I'm running. I'm running. I guess he see. I guess he see the tab turn up, and he see the writing again. He like he just snatched it. And wow. threw it. He just snatched my towel and threw it. I say, oh, okay. That's how we. That's how we gonna play, man. I can't. I hey, I can't do nothing to you, but I'm about. To, I'm about to just do it to them. <laughs> All right. That now, now give us. Give us a little bit on Trevor. Um, Trevor. Uh, he, he humble guy. Uh, don't really. He don't really. He he friendly, but don't really say much. He don't really say much. Uh, hard worker. Amazing person. Uh, he don't like no matter who you is. He will talk to you now. If you um now if you come on some crazy stuff, all that all that crazy mess. Now there's one there's one thing he don't like. He don't like attention like that. Like like he can you feel me? He can he can take it. He can take it away. But he don't like being the center stage. Like feel me? Like people always asking him like. Oh, you Trevor Lawrence? Uh, can I do this? Can I? Like, bro, calm down, bro. Like, <laughs> like the like everybody regular, everybody like like let let the man live sometimes, bro. Yeah. But you gotta understand, at Clemson, y'all not y'all are regular like that. No, I, understand, I understand that, but hey, they worship the ground y'all walk on down there. The man, the man got to live sometimes. The man can't even go out to eat. Let the man go out to eat, big. Stuff like that, like, letting the man live, that's what I say. 
Amazing so, person. Amazing person. As we kind of near the end of all this, I want to ask you if there's – obviously, we're going to have two questions, actually. But if there's one thing that you want to let all 32 NFL teams know, obviously, you still have another season to play, so you want to focus on that. But we know you're going to take care of business there. What's the one thing you want the all 32 teams to know about Darian Kendrick? Um, I'll say the reason I came, I came back to school was to finish, like, graduate, uh, get my degree, and then do whatever I want to do after that. It wasn't really like, oh, go get it, like, go get this money, like, right now. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what I want to do first, make sure, like, they know, like, it's not just about football. That's a mature decision. That really, like, that really is. I don't think people understand that. That's a very yeah. mature decision. Now, I did tell Ski off, off air, though. I said, people will stop going back to school for that degree now, for that weak degree. <laughs> you, see, you, see, you see some guys go back and, and nah, that's, go. That's real, though. That's real, because I thought about that. I thought about that at first. But I was I like, think, nah, I might I as think well. you're a better player. You you're a better player I might as well do it now. <laughs> you feel me? Do my third year corner. Get better. Yeah, Facts, yeah. facts. I ain't got to worry about it no more. Because, I mean, you see, does it scare you a little bit, though, to see guys like Deshaun Wade, for example, could have been a first-round pick. He goes back to school just to get a piece of paper. No offense. He, was, he only probably had two or three classes left because, you know, you guys are pretty much on accelerated schedules with how much you're on campus uh, pretty much year-round. Uh, and now he goes fifth round, lost a lot of bread. That's Obviously, I'm not going to lie, you're a better player than Deshaun Wade. I don't really worry about your skill set. But does that kind of give you a scare a little bit? Because sometimes you got to worry about health as well, too. Right. Because I had, I had an injury last year, a little knee injury or whatever, but it wasn't that major. But mm -hmm. I could have been docked for that. I could have been docked for that. And I missed the game. So you feel me? Like, stuff like that. Like, you can't just throw yourself out there. Like, now, if you've been balling, You've been balling ever since you touched touch out there, and you feel me? Oh, you, oh, you straight, you straight. <laughs> but you have essentially though at the corner position ever since you touched down yeah. the other corner. But it's different for me though. I only been there two years. This this is my third year, so I I think like I gotta get better. You feel me? I gotta get better. Which is crazy because you see a guy like Caleb Farley from Virginia Tech, for example. He only just played yeah. for pretty much the same path that you went down. He was getting consideration for being a top 10, top 15 pick right. when he just it just moved over. Obviously, he had the back problems that made him drop to the back of the first. But it's like there's really a spot for you to be in the first round this coming year. Like, what does that feel like to – There's a your dreams are really right, really right there. Like, what does it feel like to have those things be on the horizon? Just got to keep working um, and stay out the way for it. So hey, so with uh, you got to describe to some people what stay out the way mean. Oh, hold on, let's get connection with. How do I do me like that? <laughs> All right, uh, I was saying you got to explain this. You know, everybody listening, some people might be of a, a different color, so you got to explain to them what does stay out the way mean. Um, just like <laughs> staying out of trouble for real, like, in, like trouble can find you anywhere. Like, you don't gotta go looking for it. Mm -hmm. So just doing what I gotta do and just staying out the way, uh, and just doing what I gotta do to not get in trouble for real. Like, just staying clean. I'm not like I'm not old enough to you feel me? Care, yeah. care. So you feel me? I I don't need to you feel me, be around it until I get my life and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. like just moving smart, like moving smart, doing what you got to do. Uh oh. Oh, it kicked you again. All right, now we good. We good. We can all this out, and then we do the recording like when we do the editing. So don't worry about yeah. that. Uh, with, I don't know if you listened to last week's episode, but, oh, Skig, I didn't tell you we was doing this. I got, I done got you again. Mm. We do a segment called, we do a segment called Skiggy Says. I go back, <laughs> I go back to his Twitter. I could find something from three years ago. 
find something that he said, liked, or retweeted, <laughs> or anything, or anything, and I just ask him about it. Just you know, he be fool. He he a fool. So I gotta I gotta see what he be thinking sometimes. Just, just, just so people get a little bit of his personality. For this week's edition of Skiggy says, I want to do a special edition. What is the wildest thing Skiggy has said to you before? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't even think. It's been a man. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the wildest thing I've ever told you before. <laughs> to be truthful, yeah. Hey, Skig, don't let me know what you be on, man. I'm trying you to think. That hard, you got to think that hard about it. You hey, man. It. I'm, 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 I say a lot of wild stuff, man. I'm going to say the most recent. I'm going to say the funniest, most recent. Uh oh. So we, nah, it ain't, it ain't nothing crazy, but we on the game. We on the, we on the, we playing war zone. <laughs> we playing war zone. We, you know, we getting slid at first. We getting slid. You know, we getting a couple kids. And we out of there. Bam. Skid like, he say I'm mad now. He said, now nah, I got a couple beers on me when I start getting good. You know what? You know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas start oh. going crazy. Hey man, I just need me. I just need me about one or two to oh really, to really oh get it going. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what get it going on Warzone, man. Oh my God, see, bro, I can't, I can't play with you. You, you too good for me, bro. You, I just can't. I play. I, I, had, I, I had to report DK one day, man. We had been getting lit on, and then he just started turning up. I say, oh no, nah, you don't turn your aim bot on. <laughs> nah, bro. When I be locked in, I be locked in, man. I'm gonna have yeah, to come second, watch you play. Skig too good, bro. I can't, I can't play with him, bro. You, t- you, you like you a real gamer. I just play. <laughs> you know, I play a little rebirth resurgence with my brother and my best friend. You know, just for some, some recreational uh, fun. Man, you, you gotta get in the Royale with the boys, man. Oh yeah, you gotta get a session in one day. Nah, the P- I told you I don't got a mic, but the PS5 do have a mic on it, so yeah. That was, a, that was a smooth PS5 flex for you. Just, you know, <laughs> I got me one. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll listen to the little, little, little group. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hop on with y'all one day. Don't don't come in here and tell the people what happened, though, because I ain't good. So, like, <laughs> <laughs> I literally might just be walking around behind y'all. I'm like, yeah, 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 y'all get him. But I will tell you what I will do. We win. I do get in the lobby and start talking crazy, though. <laughs> I can I can have zero kills on the board. I'm gonna talk crazy when I get in that lobby. That is hey, I'm the, I'm the hey. type that I don't. Hey, I'll be on the other side of the map. And hey, that's one thing the camp don't do. We don't allow zero kills. Oh yeah, yeah. You gotta have at least uh, one. You gotta have at least one. I will see what I can do. All right. <laughs> next next time y'all get on, y'all hit me up, and I I'll see what my skill set is looking like that day. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> You know, I'll be on MLB. I'll just be running, running the table MLB a couple of days out of the week. But that Call of Duty, that's that's more of a nighttime game for me. <laughs> I can't play during the day, man. It's, I can't. It's too violent for me in the middle of the day. That's one of those nighttime things. Okay. <laughs> Got to slide in the nighttime, man. Got to slide in the nighttime. But uh, that wraps up another episode of On Campus with JB and Skiggy. Featuring a very special guest this week, Darion Kendrick. Uh, looking looking forward to see where he goes next. Uh, DK, just let the people know uh, you're not a, obviously not a huge social media guy. If they want to find your social media, where can they find you at? Just what they can expect from you? A timetable and decision, or what's the next step for Darion Kendrick in his career? Uh, y'all might y'all might see something out there soon about me going <laughs> about me going somewhere. It depends on how I'm feeling, but most likely y'all are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make sure it's my, all my supporters and stuff, man. Yeah, all right. Where I'm going. So. Hey, you're officially a friend of the podcast now, so we're gonna start tagging you and stuff. Like, oh, friend of the podcast, catches DK catches a pitch. Uh, my 
My Instagram is drk one dot underscore. Okay. And then my Twitter is underscore Rayshine with three N's. R-A-Y-S-H-A-W-N-N-N underscore. All right. Now, when we post the show, you got to you gotta retweet. You got to post on your Instagram. And make sure when you repost it, you tell people leave five stars. That's the motto. We got to leave five stars. Yeah, got to leave five stars, man. You already yeah. five stars. We can't. No ghost listeners. We don't want people just listening. If you're rocking with it, drop the five stars down there. Hit the subscribe button. We're going to have more guests. We're going to talk more good stuff on this podcast. Already got a great episode planned for next week with Skiggy. Skig, get us out of here, man. Hey, man, thank you guys for listening. You know what we preach. Peace and love, everybody. Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you.